Hi guys, Mike from Mike and Bike and Back with another video for you this week. Uh, I thought this week I would try to lace up a wheel for the first time. I don't know if you saw a couple weeks ago, I went out for a ride and I ended up snapping the axle shaft in my rear hub and DT Swiss ended up warrantying the part and sending me out a new one and I took it to a local bike shop and they took it apart and greased it up and replaced the part for me. So I'm ready to go ahead and uh, start lacing up a new wheel. So the reason I wanted to take this opportunity since my hub is off the wheel and everything to build up a new wheel is that even though this was a really nice wheel set when I bought it, I got a really great deal on it. It was a DT Swiss setup, it had 350 boost hubs in the front and rear. Uh, which are great hubs, uh, but the wheel set themselves were kind of lacking. Uh, something I wish I knew then what I know now is that, you know, this setup was for like cross country. So it used some weaker lightweight uh, spokes and alloy nipples that ended up corroding on me. The spokes ended up snapping on me. Something I didn't know then was that a lot of wheel sets, they come in uh, like different spoke amounts. So this was a 28 spoke wheel, um, which is really a cross country kind of amount and then stronger wheels, more spokes. So there's 32 and 36. You know, 32 could be, you know, trail, enduro, 36 maybe more downhill. And it, it depends on the kind of spokes you use and everything too. And cross patterns. I thought since I already have these hubs, I wanted to build a wheel up around it. So that's where I decided to see what I could try to do to make a stronger wheel with only 28 holes. For anyone that's never tried to build a wheel before, to lace up a wheel, I found that DT Swiss, if you go to their website, they have an excellent spoke calculator. So you just plug in the measurements of what you have. It could be DT Swiss uh, products, or you know, if you're using some other brands, hubs and rims, like I am, I'm actually using a uh, E13 LG1 Enduro rim, front and rear. It's got a 30 millimeter width on it. Uh, I'm gonna be using these rims with my DT Swiss 350 hubs, so, all I need to do is go on their calculator, plug in what kind of hub I had and the dimensions of the rim. Now you have to be careful when you're doing the dimensions of the rim because what we're looking for is the inside diameter, not the outside, because the outside is a 27.5 wheel. Um, that's not gonna do you any good with your spoke length because you're looking at the inside diameter here and on different wheels, it could be deep, it could be shallow. So you have to just find out what the wheel is. Um, you know, since I bought these wheels new, these rims were new, they had it right on the website, the weight and the diameter. So all I had to do was plug that information in, got my hub and DT Swiss, the calculator, they did the rest telling me the lengths and uh, which sides I needed. So even you know, since I was going with DT Swiss, I could, uh, they could even tell me their products that would work here. When you're building a wheel, uh, many times the flanges on the sides here are going to be different sides. So you can see this one is bigger than this side. This is the drive side here. So a lot of times you're going to be using different length spokes on the left and right side of the wheel. So uh, I got 14 of one length and 14 of another length. And this is all from the calculator told me what I needed to get. To go with these spokes, I need to get some spoke heads or uh, nipple heads. So I went with DT Swiss again. And since these are heavy duty uh, spokes, I needed to get the brass nipples. So these are the uh, DT Swiss Scorch Pro Lock Nipples. So they're supposed to be pretty heavy duty. That's what they recommend to go with these. 
And I also needed to get DT Swiss uh, nipple washers. They have a certain kind of bent to them that most nipple washers don't have. So uh, with my wheel, my rim that I got from E13, they included nipple washers. And you can see they're just normal looking washers. So I needed to get the DT Swiss ones because if anything goes wrong and you didn't use them with the build, uh, DT Swiss won't be you know, covering, warranting any issues that may occur. So I decided, you know, just go with uh, what they recommend and just make sure everything is okay. And so you can see these nipples are very rounded on the edge here. And this bend is supposed to go right over there, if you can see that. When normally building like 99% of like nipples and wheels you'd be building, you wouldn't have to deal with these different washers. And you would be using a nipple tool, which is pretty much a fly head screwdriver with a little point in the middle. Um, I won't be using that today because the scorch in the name of these nipples, it means this is a scorch head here, which means it has spines instead of a flat head. And DT Swiss uh, designed this this way so you wouldn't get rounding out of these, but that meant I needed to get a special DT Swiss tool that would go on the scorch head here. So I'll be using that instead of your regular nipple tool to be fastening the spokes. Uh, one more thing I should say about the spokes, uh, if you've never dealt with spokes before, this is, I think this might be a triple butted uh, spoke. It's at least a double headed, double butted spoke, which means that the ends of the spoke are going to be, have much more width than the center of the spoke, which will allow the spoke to have a little bit more flexibility, but keeping its strength overall. So that's good. That's what most spokes are going to be. Um, with this hub setup, this is a classic uh, hub, which means it's going to have these flanges that are have holes drilled out. Now, the other common hub you would see are stripe pole, and you'd have stripe pole uh, spokes with it. Going to be a little bit more expensive because it costs a lot more to for a company to machine that kind of setup on a hub than it is just to drill some holes in one sheet here, like this is. Uh, since I'm going with the classic, I need the J-ended spokes instead of the straight pole. So this is the kind of spoke I'm gonna be using. Most times when people are building wheels, they would need to lubricate or grease the threads of the uh, spokes. That way you don't have any problems if you need to true your wheel you know, months down the line. But I won't be doing that because these nipples, uh, they're called the Prolock because there's a compound that these nipples uh, are made with that is kind of like a, uh, a thread locker of a sort. So it recommends not using anything, no oil, no lube or anything on these threads. So I won't be doing that today. I will, however, be putting all these nipples together with the washers. And I do need to put some grease on there in between those contact points. Now I found the best way of doing this is taking a glob of grease here. I'm just gonna put it right there. Should be enough. And taking just a trusty little Q-tip and we're just gonna dip it in here get some of it on that nipple. Take a washer, make sure it's in the right orientation. Slide it right over there. And we're gonna do that 28 more times. All right, just like that, we've got all the nipples and nipple washers greased up and ready to go. 
The next step we have is taking the hub and we're going to start lacing. So since I'm going to start with the driver's side first, I'm going to take eight spokes from the shorter spokes because that's what the calculator told me I needed was the shorter spokes on the driver's side. So I got one, two, three, eight. Right, I'll take them out. We're going to start pushing them in through the outside first and every other hole. There we go. So again, every other hole. Having something like this. So I'm going to put this down. I'm going to take my rim here. And first thing I want to do is locate the valve hole, which is right here. And I'm just going to take a little piece of tape here. And I'm just going to tape right there just so it is easier for me to find that because that's where we're starting and it, it just makes it easier to locate it right away. And we're going to take our first spoke. And we're just going to put it to the right of the valve hole. So the valve hole is right here. Just gonna go to the right of it. And we're going to take one of our nipple, nipples here. We gotta thread it on. So it's just on there. Let me turn this around so you can see a little bit better. We're going to take our next spoke. Since this is a three cross pattern, we're going to count three holes. To the left of this is going to be one, two, three, and in the fourth hole, we're going to stick the spoke through. Another wash nipple. Thread this on good. And repeat with the next spoke. Count one, two, three, and then the fourth hole. Going around this way. One, two, three, and in the fourth hole. Just like that. Grab another nipple. So at this point, it should be looking like this. So now the next thing we need to do is pull spokes, our longer spokes for the other side. We're going to grab another four of them. I'm sorry, eight of them. Five, six, seven, eight. And this time we're going to go through the disc side, the non-drive side. We're going to find our valve hole spoke. We're going to follow that back. And directly on the other side of the drive side, we are going to find that the holes don't align on either side. They're just offset. So once you find in between on the other side, you're going to want to go to the right side and put a spoke through. And you're going to want to stay to the right side of the spoke you put in before. And just like so. With that first spoke on the opposite side in place, you can go ahead and on every other hole, chop your spokes through. 
just like we did the first side. We can just take the next spoke and go in the front of the other spoke that we started on before. You want to be careful now as you're getting a little bit more tension. The threads on the end of the spoke will scratch your rim. So you want to be careful when you're guiding it through the hole. You don't end up scratching it. Now that you put all those in place, you should be left with some pattern like this. Now you can see it can go left or you can turn it right. That radial look there. So to make sure we have the pattern going the correct direction, we're gonna find our valve hole here and we're gonna make sure that our parallel line here is not going to block that valve hole. So if we have the configuration set up like this and once we get the other spokes in it's going to be very hard to access our valve hole, our uh, valve so we're going to want to orientate it the opposite way that way when we get the other spokes in we're going to be parallel here and we're going to have a gap that allows access to the valve hole now we're going to be going from the opposite side in grab all our leftover short spokes and we will fill up the rest of the holes. The opposite side. It's a little bit trickier once there's more spokes in here to get them all through. And you should be able to just drop them right in. Now that we have all those spokes in, this is where the cross three comes into play. So right now we have this radial going to this side. We're going to take our first spoke and we're going to cross two. So we're going to go over two. So here's the first one we go over. Here's the second one. And then on the third spoke, we're going to go underneath and we're going to put that spoke through the first available hole. Yeah, things get a little bit harder. So let's take our nipple. Now, if you're working with uh, normal spokes, you could probably just take a spoke and thread it on and that would help reach it through, but since these have the scorch ends, I can just push that through and there's my spoke. There you are. We're just gonna find our hole, stick it through, and we can start threading from there. Okay, that's on. Go to the next one down. So we're gonna cross two, so one, two, And we'll go under the third and into the first hole. Grab another nipple. And thread it on. And repeat that same pattern across the wheel. So cross one, two, and go under the third. Then find the first available hole. Go 
right around. This will be a little bit more challenging the more you go on. Make sure it's got threaded on. One, two, and under. The pattern's pretty simple. Once you've done your first one or two, it's pretty straightforward. You just keep repeating the same thing. Oh, lost the washer. Have to be really careful with the washers because if they fall off inside the wheel, it can be a pain in the butt to shake it back out. And it will get a little bit tougher as you go on. That's okay, that's normal. should have this pattern going on here. Looking good. Now we're going to go on the opposite side, the last side here. And take our remaining spokes and we're going to drop them back through just like we did with the driver's side. Now, it doesn't matter which one we start on, we're just going to go the opposite. That's where these are going, and we're going to do the same thing as we did on the driver's side. So we're going to go across two, one, two, and under the third, and we'll find the first available hole, which is the only hole left, so that makes it pretty easy. Get our nipple ready here. Thread that on, all right, and continue on the next. Go one, two, and under, and in the hole. when you can check your work. Make sure that your valve hole down here has two parallel lines and it's open and accessible. And it looks like we're golden. So the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go around and tighten all of these nipples. Uh, not all the way, I'm gonna leave about three or so threads showing on this side just so we can get a little bit of tension on the wheel and get it ready to be trued. Much, much, much later. All right. So I've got a laced wheel. All right, now the wheel has been all laced up and all the spokes have about equal tension going around the outside. It is well ready to be dished and true, which I don't have a true stand, so I'm going to have to take it in to be true and dished. But, you know, this was the hard part, the lacing and everything, and I want to go out and prove that anyone could lace up a wheel, and it's not as intimidating as I first thought. As long as you're able to get the right parts and put everything together in the right order, 
I, I think this is not too bad of a project to do. Now, having laced up this wheel for the first time, uh, I don't feel like it was as overwhelming as I expected it to be. I think the most overwhelming part is trying to do the research of trying to find the right line spokes and uh, everything you need to build up the wheel to make sure everything's the right size. But with there being such great online calculators out there, uh, that can take all the questions out of the equation. And once you get the right parts, uh, you know, going through and just lacing it up, not too bad. I mean, this, this is something you could do in 20 minutes or half an hour, you could lace up a wheel. And imagine the money you'd be able to save not having someone else do it for you. If you found this helpful at all, uh, let me know. Subscribe if you'd like to see more, and I'll see you around for the next video. Thanks. Bye.